Mayor Choksi's abduction claim is falling apart. The fugitive jeweler had named four people who were part of alleged conspiracy. However, one of them has rejected all the allegations and has promised to cooperate with the police. Here's more. Fraudster Mehul Choksi is currently in a Dominican hospital. He is fighting charges of illegally entering the country. While he remains on trial, Choksi's abduction claim is falling apart. Mehul Choksi, who allegedly escaped from Antigua to Dominica, has claimed that he was assaulted and abducted. He had named four people who were part of the alleged conspiracy. Among them was Hungarian national Barbara Jarabic and Gurjeet Bhandal, a UK resident. Now Gurjeet has rejected Choksi's allegations of being gagged, tortured and given electric shocks. Bhandal has now claimed that he had left Antigua on the morning of May 23rd on a yacht, while Choksi alleged that he was kidnapped in the evening. The 50-year-old British Indian has also claimed that he had gone sailing with his friend Gurmeet Singh, also named by Choksi. Bhandal has now promised to cooperate with the investigation. Meanwhile, in India, the Enforcement Directorate is set to file a charge sheet against Choksi's wife, Preeti, alleging that she was a beneficiary of few offshore firms which were allegedly created and used for laundering money. Sources say the investigators are in possession of evidence that show the money defrauding from Punjab National Bank through letter of understandings were routed through shell companies linked to Preeti Choksi. This even as Preeti Choksi, while speaking to India today, had denied all charges against her husband. I fail to understand why his name was included. And I believe the press should have investigated this. Also, the CBI should have investigated this. I believe in that chart sheet, my husband is not charged with anything because he was not ever involved with Nirav Modi. We had no business transactions with Nirav Modi. With his alibis being shattered, will Choksi finally be sent back to India? Bureau report, India Today. After Jitin Prasad's exit from Congress to the join the BJP, all eyes are now on Rajasthan's former Deputy Chief Minister Sachin Pilot. Sachin Pilot is in Delhi till Sunday, but he says that he has no plans of meeting Rahul or Priyanka Gandhi. This comes after Congress General Secretary Priyanka Gandhi, along with other senior party leaders, dialed Pilot on Friday and assured him of solution regarding the growing discontent in the Pilot camp. The Pilot faction has decided to adopt a wait and watch policy for the time being, to not wanting to act in a haste. It is hopeful that the party high command is going to intervene and there will soon be government expansion and changes in the organizational structure of the party in Rajasthan. Sachin Pilot had openly revolted against the leadership of Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot in July last year. The pilot camp is aggrieved that there has not been any cabinet expansion and no MLA from the pilot camp has been given a cabinet berth. After a four-year stint in the BJP, Mukul Roy today did an about turn and returned to the TMC. Mamta Banerjee and her nephew Abhishek welcomed Roy back, calling it a homecoming. Mamta Banerjee says that more BJP netas will defect in the times to come. The Khela hasn't stopped in Bengal. Mukul ke amra wamadar ghare di chile, ghare pidlo, ejono amra ovinondon janasi. After over three years with the BJP, Didi's family man, Mukul Roy, returns home. And this Mamata Mukul Milap is ripping the BJP wide open in Bengal. Don't miss the irony of this image. The man garlanding Mukul Roy and holding him in a warm embrace, Mamata's nephew Abhishek, is the very reason Mukul Roy quit the party back in 2017. 
how things have changed. A jubilant Abhishek headlined the event on Friday, welcoming Mukulda back into the party fold. Sources have told India today that Mukul Roy spoke to Mamata at least four times in the past one week over the phone. It's said that the two leaders were keen on a reunion even before the election. In fact, Mamata even spoke to Mukul at the Victoria Memorial event earlier this year. But why did Mukul Roy, who played a key role in the BJP's improved performance, do this gharwapsi? It is believed that Mukul felt sidelined by the BJP High Command, especially after Shuvendu Adhikari's entry. With Mukul Roy back in Team Mamata, Kela is not shesh yet for Didi as she is firm on bleeding the Saffron Party to the hilt. What do you mean by BJP would fall like house of cards? More people can come, are they? Yes, more people will come. Only we will consider the people who are gentle, who are sober and who doesn't uh, bitterness, who doesn't go for bitterness. Party Supremo Mamata Banerjee, of course, has said that there is a possibility of several top BJP leaders switching over to the Trinamool. However, she has also given a caveat. All those turncoat Trinamool leaders who had joined the BJP before elections and had bad mouth the party and worked against the interests of the Trinamool will never be taken back. With camera person Probeer Biswas, Indrajit for India Today in Kolkata. With just months to go for the UP polls, BJP is getting battled ready. The party has worked out a list of eight focus areas. Since May, there has been a series of meetings held by BJP and RSS officials to take stock of the situation in the state. Himanshu Mishra breaks down BJP's Uttar Pradesh plan. Take a look. A series of high-level meetings. New inductions. The party that rules Uttar Pradesh, India's most populous state, is padding up for the assembly elections that are eight months away. The BJP leadership has already taken feedback from its alliance partners and party workers. The message from the ground, however, is not all good. Sources tell India today the alleged mismanagement of COVID pandemic in UP can backfire for the Yogi Adityanath government. They are worried it could cost them at least 100 seats if they don't act now and act decisively. The BJP has worked out an eight-point battle plan. The first and foremost task on the agenda is an expansion of the cabinet. New faces could help in an image makeover as well as by placating angry members. This includes alliance partners who claim their views were not taken into account in the last four years. There are clear indications already. Home Minister Amit Shah met allies Anupriya Patel and Sanjay Nishad who are likely to get ministerial posts. The BJP has to set its house in order as well. The Chief Minister's alleged autocratic style of working has anguished many party workers. Sources claim that Yogi Adityanath has been asked to increase interaction with party MLAs over the next six months. While there may be changes in cabinet, sources say there will be no change in the party leadership in the state. Swatantra Dev Singh, sources say, will continue to serve as the state party chief despite the setback suffered in the panchayat polls. This is because the party feels a Thakur chief minister and a state chief from a backward community works best for its image in the present scenario. Jitin Prasada's induction in the party, sources say, will help the party hold on to Brahmin votes. The state government will also boost its anti-COVID vaccination drive. Work on key development projects like Bundel Khand Expressway, regional rapid transit system, Jewar Airport and women's schemes will be expedited. The BJP says it will reach out to the economically weaker sections. The UP government 
has granted 230 crore rupees to 23 lakh laborers. Sources say many more such schemes are likely. The Saffron Party will stick to its Hindutva card. The party is banking on issues like anti-Romeo Brigade, Love Jihad Law, Ayodhya Temple and Grand Diwali celebrations to hold on to its core vote bank. There are some loopholes amid the party, be it the dominance of bureaucracy or some other factors, but as per the party seniors, be it BL Santosh or Radha Mohan Singh, there is nothing like that happening in BJP and Yogi Adityanath will remain the face for the UP 2021 elections, Vidhan Sabha elections. With cameraman Amit, Samad Shivastha for India Today. The government is preparing for the third wave of the pandemic given the uncertainty. What should be the way forward? India Today's Sneha Mortani spoke to experts to find out the right approach and that is a must. Take a look at the six focus areas. <laughs> tail end of the second wave and expectations of a third be prepared for the worst is the message but what should be the focus areas focus area number one is vaccination for all vaccinating India's 94 crore citizens boosting supply and equitable distribution of doses needs to be top priority now we should be vaccinating more than 9 to 10 million per day in terms of vaccination coverage, especially by focusing on those uh, vulnerable people who are unable to register on their own and also by doing social mobilization strategy where the concerns of people are addressed regarding vaccines. Focus number two, vaccination for children and ensuring that rural India is not left behind is absolutely essential as they are now susceptible to the third wave. Aim to cover 60 to 70 percent of the population by the year end. Import mRNA vaccines and complete co-vaccine trials on two to 18 year olds so that we can vaccinate children too. The third wave is likely to hit the unvaccinated rural population and children. So that's where we need to focus. Focus area number three, rural healthcare preparedness. Work on improving primary health care and beating vaccine hesitancy in rural India should be the third focus area. We do not have enough number of hospitals and the existing infrastructure is acutely understaffed. Government data which is updated till March 2020 clearly shows that the country needs at least 38% more community health centres which is the first level of health infrastructure where rural people get access to specialist doctors and, and allied staff like radiographers. If we talk about primary health centers, the country needs at least 29% more primary health centers. Focus area number four, aggressive containment. Identify clusters quickly and ensure better genome sequencing. This is backed by testing levels and syndromic approach. By doing enhanced testing and also following syndromic approach, we need to identify the clusters of cases as early as possible. Once the clusters are identified, we should also be doing genomic sequencing to find whether there are any newer variants of concern. By doing this, we should limit the spread and also prevent from larger outbreaks. This is aggressive containment. Focus area number five building healthcare infrastructure in urban centers like Delhi where the system collapsed completely. Focus on procuring medical devices and oxygen and keeping essential medical equipment stocks like ventilators and essential medicines ready. A number of states are setting up uh, hospitals in uh, stadiums and other places all in run up to prepare for third wave. I don't think that's the right approach. What should be done? They should recruit more human resources, make the existing health facilities fun functional, increase allocation for government healthcare facilities, ensure supply and availability of more medicines. So it's not about setting up facilities, but it's more about making existing one functional. Experts say the focus area number six should be on data and information, which is handy with the government right now.
Well, this virus has the potential to spring some very unpleasant surprises like mutating variants, for example. But the good thing is that there is a lot that we know about SARS-CoV-2 than we knew earlier in the first wave or the second wave, for example. There is a lot of information that we have. The enemy isn't exactly unknown. In New Delhi, Sneha Murdani for India Today.